Today, the United Kingdom has begun the biggest vaccination programme in this country's history. Britain wasn't the first to roll out a coronavirus vaccine. It was narrowly beaten by Russia. However, Russia's Sputnik V vaccine has not passed any safety tests. And also I'm British. Usually when I hear about the Russians injecting someone, it's the FSB with a poisoned umbrella. But Britain is the first country to be using the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. And there aren't many things that make me proud to be British these days, but this does, because someone's got to go first. And on social media, there's already been a change in the attitude of the people who say that the lockdown is a form of tyranny or masks are government control. The people who say 99 point whatever made up number it is they're using today, that number of people recover, so we might as well just let all the disabled people die and we'll be fine. The people who refuse to live in fear. Well, now they're being asked, will you have an injection? And their response is, no, I'm scared. But I think it's understandable that many people are skeptical or wary because there's so much false information circulating on social media and most of it looks authentic. I think many people share it in good faith, not knowing that it will soon be flagged up as false information or missing context. If you search for anti-vax on Pinterest, nothing comes up now other than a warning. And companies like Facebook and Twitter are employing independent fact checkers to verify what's going on their sites. So I think people share things without realising the information has been very carefully cherry picked in the way that is the hallmark of the conspiracy theorist. For example, if you were to get a recipe from a conspiracy theorist or truth seeker, they would redact half of the ingredients, then change the temperature and cooking time. So when you opened the oven thinking, what the fuck is this meant to be? They could rush in and go, ha, I told you, cakes don't exist. However, I predict the conspiracy theorists are about to change gear, getting louder and angrier. Because throughout the pandemic, every time a government has said they got their figures wrong or changed their advice, which I think is understandable given that no one has lived through this before, the hardline truth seekers have been out screaming, PLANDEMIC! But now there's a vaccine, so in the coming months they're going to look fucking stupid. More so than usual. So what's going to happen when people go to get vaccinated? Well, they'll have one injection, and three weeks later, they'll have another one. That's it. Yes, there will be a few people who have adverse reactions and feel unwell. That's to be expected. But there are politicians, celebrities, sports personalities saying they're willing to go on television and be vaccinated live on air. But still, that's not enough for the conspiracy theorists. They're online saying it won't be the real vaccine. It will just be water. What do these fuckers want? They won't be happy until they go into a hospital and see Bill Gates with a bandolier made up of hypodermic needles shoving a wheelbarrow full of microchips. In the comment section of a news story on Facebook about the vaccine, a lady claiming to be a nurse, we'll get to that in a moment, because I had a look at her page and it transpires she's a fully paid up tinfoiler. Her reasoning was the vaccine stored at minus 70, but your body isn't at minus 70, so how's that going to work? I fear that woman has trouble eating frozen food, breaking her teeth on carrots that have been stored at minus 20. Whereas, if I fancy some delicious roast potatoes, I put them in the oven next to the cake that doesn't exist. Like I said, this lady claimed to be a nurse, but said she's completely healthy, even though she's never had a vaccination. At this point, a real nurse who posted her ID as proof joined the conversation and pointed out that one of the first things that happens to nursing students is they're smashed full of needles. Vaccines, not heroin. Then there are the COVID deniers, the people who've completed the University of YouTube or received their Facebook doctorate, claiming there's no such thing as COVID, this is just seasonal flu. So what the fuck was killing everyone back in May? It turns out that Dino, whose Facebook bio describes himself as living at large, a 34-year-old unemployed former warehouse operative, isn't a qualified epidemiologist. But by the time I'd gone on break at quarter to ten this morning, the tide had turned against the Covid deniers and truth seekers. Because every time one of them comments on social media, multiple people will ask, 
Where are you getting your numbers from? Or can you send us the source of that information? And the COVID deniers are getting into a flap because they can't find their sources because it's all been removed by the fact checkers. I got into a discussion with a rather vile man called Bob. And I presume Bob's mother drank heavily whilst he was pregnant with him. But he said there are hundreds of thousands of healthcare professionals opposed to vaccination. So I said, send me the link. A minute passed and he couldn't. But then he came back and said, here, here is a list of doctors opposed to vaccination. And in the world on this list, there were 37. And I would have been more convinced if I wasn't able to register myself on that list as Dr. Mickey Mouse. And over the coming months, I expect the Tin Paw Brigade will find something else to scream about. And I also expect that most of the people who are worried about getting vaccinated will have it done. Because I honestly believe it isn't they don't want to be vaccinated, it's just they don't want to go first, because that takes a lot of bravery. And the first person to receive the vaccine is a 90-year-old grandmother originally from Northern Ireland called Margaret Keenan. Bravery doesn't look like this, it looks like this. Thanks for watching. And for anyone who saw my video about monoliths yesterday, wanker!